Galactic Graver here. We are back at Fallout 4, and today we'll be taking a look at two-way power doors um, using three different methods. We got the pressure plate method, we got the uh, switch method, and a little uh, special thing for later. Um, let's look at them one by one, and then I'll show you how to build them uh, all individually. First up, we've got the regular pressure plate door. Uh, I would assume you'd want to build this maybe more just like a regular base inside your settlement um, just because just about anybody can step on this and walk through. So if you don't want your settlers wandering on in here, then uh, I wouldn't use this method. But quick ease and access, this is so much quicker to me than just running up and hitting a switch. I don't want to be bogged down by uh, a whole bunch of nonsense. Uh, these do occasionally get just kind of jammed, but then just step on it again and uh, it all works out. Yeah, see that happened again. A little annoying, but you know, what can you do? Next up, we've got the uh, powered switch doors. Uh, you want to go in and shut it when you come back out or behind you. I would assume you probably want to build this more at the beginning of your base or your settlement. Uh, this will stop raiders and whatnot coming on in. And uh, this one uses the logic gate in order to get around having two switches hooked up to the same uh, door. And then last but not least, we have our uh, secret key door. Now, uh, it looks a little janky, but this is really the only way I could figure out uh, how to make this work. We got wooden crates here. If, no. Sorry about that, guys. Oh, if we go into this bottom crate here, hit transfer, and go to our key, which is simply one piece of steel, you get it taken away, and this does take a little bit, ding, and voila, open door. And then you can just flip the switch, and that'll shut it behind you. Um, you're definitely going to want to build a room or something to block all this off because uh, it's a little bit bigger than what you would have in say like Minecraft uh, for a hidden door but uh, hey it works and we want to get back out and just flip that switch and it shut it behind us you just gotta check in stop it another piece of steel and that'll take a sweet time but it will eventually close for us and so yeah, let's uh, let's take these apart and uh, show you step by step how to build each one of these. All right, guys. Starting with the uh, first door, we're gonna uh, of course gonna have to get yourself a powered door, and you're gonna want your the conduit to be facing inwards towards your generators, wherever your generators are. And uh, then of course you're gonna have to go and grab yourself pressure plate. Make sure you get it nice and snug. Throw one over on the other side. Then you're going to go to your conduits and grab yourself a pass-through wall conduit. Which looks... Way on the other side. There we go. And they are kind of finicky to place. You just gotta kind of move around until you find the right. Oh, there we go. And then you're gonna go to the other side and do the same thing. And then you're gonna need male or female ends for your pass through wall conduits, like so. The conduit junctions. Then you're going to take a wire from power generator to this first guy. That's going to power this. Which you can then run to your pressure plate. From the pressure plate over to that conduit. Which power that guy. And then from there, you can simply connect to that conduit. So now, if you were to walk through here, that'll open up that side. And 
And then you're going to take the power cord from here, right there, and there, to there, like so. Now you can, of course, use the conduits to redirect this up higher so that it's not uh, going straight through the view if that bugs you. Um, but now, no matter which power plate you step on, pressure plate, sorry, your door will open uh, with no issue until it has an issue because this is Fallout. On to the next one. Alright guys, now for the uh, powered switch door. Um, first, of course, power switches. And it really doesn't matter where you put them, but one right there. And one right there. And then you need to go again to get, you no, know, pass through conduits. Same format as before. straight and finish it off with these little guys conduit junctions it's going to take me a real long time to remember those names and again same as before connected to that guy that guy actually this would be better it's over here, so you're not crossing over the doorway. Makes it look a little nicer, at least. And then from him to that. Here's where it gets slightly different. We're going to go into our logic gates. And we're going to go over to NAND logic gate. And we can just throw him up there. Uh, it transmits power unless they all have power. So... This one, which we need to power, goes into the red side, as does this one, and then on the black negative side, we're going to the actual door control, like that. Now, on uh, that side it opens, flip it on that side it closes. Alright guys, and for the last one, seems a little ridiculous considering that Fallout is a single player uh, world and you're not going to have anyone breaking into your base and stealing your stuff. I still think it's fun to make the secret pass or uh, secret key door just because I can. For no other reason. So again, we're going to start off with the power door with the conduit facing in. Um, went ahead and put on a platform right here just to make it easier to make our wall. It's going to help hide some of the mechanics here. Um, and so first thing I would do is go into containers. And you want to grab yourself the wooden crates way at the end. And you're just going to stack them up. Try and get them as straight as you can. Right in the corner. Like that. I have all the things that easily clip together. Why these don't, I don't know. But this is the best solution I have come up with after uh, thinking a whole whole long time on uh, how I would actually achieve this. These seem to blend in with the wall the best out of any other container, especially with the concrete walls, um, which I'm going to go grab next. The one great thing about concrete walls is they really don't mind smashing into other other walls and other objects. So I get this one with the angled ends. I'm just kind of smush that right up. What did I just do? Nope. 
I, what I was saying is, try and get us nice and flat up against this wall as you can. And try and mask the fact that uh, there's something a little weird going on with it. There we go. And we can still access our boxes. Now on this side, we are going to go all the way over to manufacturing. Miscellaneous, and we're going to grab a vacuum hopper puller. This part may take you some time to uh, get right, because it's really got to really be kind of clipped into the boxes, but not too much. It also can't be too close to the door. And you want to make sure this is nice and, uh, nice and straight also. Because, of course, that'll affect your entire, entire assembly line. Right about there, I think. I think that'll work just fine. Yeah, that should work. Alright, and then we are going to want to get... Nope, oh, back into miscellaneous. Want a sorter, just the standard sorter. And then we need at least one of these right here at least a little small guy and then over here you don't really need this but uh conveyor storage on either side just so you're not losing items and then we're going to need a tripwire tripwire switch because we're not going to want it to close on us Place that right on that. And just power that guy up. That should power the whole line. Make sure everything is on. Everything looks to be on. Nope. Stop it. Alright, next. We are going to go into our switches. And uh, grab your switch of choice. over into logic gates and we are going to get an AND gate and you're going to kind of need it up high so that uh, your tripwire switch can reach. You can always throw in uh, another conduit though Just right over here like that That guy up to there, and then that's going to run into your positive line. Oh, we also need to power the tripwire. Like that. Hate jumping while in workshop mode. Um, and then we can do also that guy over there. And from the output straight to the door. Now if we were to just throw, oh no, one last thing up, let the reaver forgot, power the switch. Alright, now if we were to just flip the switch, nothing happens. Why isn't anything happening? Did I use the wrong one? Uh, one second guys. Alright guys, I was just being stupid. Uh, it's not an AND gate that we need. What we need is an OR gate. OR gate. I yeah, don't say that one too many times. Starts to sound a little weird. Alright, but the OR gate will allow us to power the door if either the tripwire has been flipped or the switch has been flipped. So then that will operate that. Now all we have to do is set up our uh, special key. You want to go to your sorter and pick any junk you have. Uh, really doesn't matter what it is, um, but it's going to be like a you want it to be a component, not not, a, not like a toy or a solid piece of junk, something that has already been scrapped. So there's plain steel, adhesive, uh, anything like that will work. 
and then from this side all you have to do is go to the bottom one not sure why it has to be the bottom but it does so that's it throw that in there and you just see it disappear boom then it will get taken along the conveyor belt sort of will recognize that it is the same item then you're going to chip your trip wire which selects the AND gate which opens the door for you and if you uh if you're leaving your base all you have to do is make sure you have another one of the items on you before you leave select that bottom one throw in your key with a super long time but again no real player is going to be uh, breaking into your base it's just something that i thought was pretty cool and uh using logic gates is is always a fun time for me so uh why not get ridiculous with it you know i've always been a minecraft player so uh being able to do things like this in fallout which has been a love i've had for very 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 long time um just just combines two worlds for me that are that are really quite awesome I can't say enough good things about Fallout 4 and all the expansions that we've been getting. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I know I sound stupid and I'm going to drag on and on, but uh, it really is good. good job, Bethesda. Good job. Well, guys, that's it. I do hope you found it informative and I hope you had fun learning. Um, I definitely had fun um, figuring out how these will work. And, uh, yeah, this is really my first tutorial video, so please let me know if this was helpful. If uh, I sound like an idiot, let me know. I don't, uh, I don't get my heat feelings hurt easily, so don't worry about that. If I am being dumb or if I'm being confusing, I want to know, because I really, I really enjoy logic gates and switches and, uh, technical things and, uh, want to be able to spread the love. Uh, if also, if you do enjoy this type of building and these types of uh, jobs or projects, uh, you should totally check out my industrial district episodes. I am uh, building this guy up here and uh, we'll be turning the rest of this area into an industrial district, so you should go check that out. Um, but uh, yeah, guys, um, shut up you. I don't care about your fingernails. I don't care. Doing a monologue. Yeah. yeah. Alright. Um, yeah, sorry about that, guys. Uh, if you like this video, please hit that like button. If you really like it, subscribe to see more Fallout and uh, probably other stuff in the future. Maybe a BattleBots Arena coming up. I'm real excited about. And uh, as the expansions keep on rolling out, I will definitely have a constant supply of inspiration for new videos. Um, yeah. Thanks, guys. This has been Epileptic Raver. Uh, have a nice day. Bye-bye.